What's going on, everybody? All right, let me do something. I'm gonna roll my what's name down here if y'all want to. I'm gonna throw this cash up down here. If y'all want to, y'all can. If y'all don't, hey, still greatly appreciated for coming and spending some time with me and in, in, in this live for sure. Hey, Let's see, I have to figure this out, y'all. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. All right, baby, you got a money? Yeah, I just sent it. What do you want me to get? How many? $400. Yeah, just make sure you get it back. I'll do it your time. No, you don't. I do. No, you don't. I have to ask you. And Scroll across bottom ticker. All right, y'all. If y'all want to, there you go. That's the cash up down at the bottom. If you want to, you know, donate to the channel, you ain't got to, but somebody told me to, um, uh, Shout out to that person, man. Oh, no, I don't mean that. Hold on, y'all. I got to edit some. My daughter up there flipping, y'all. She over there flipping. Okay. Hold on, y'all. Uh, the banner show. Okay. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Um, what's going on? A resilient dad. Strap house customs, which is refrigerator Q. What's going on, brother? Jason and Shannon Young. What's going on, everybody? I started not to go live, but I felt a little bit better. I've been battling a cold all week. I got out here. Monday, getting off work, 1.30 in the morning, and it was like 20, upper 20s, and yeah, I had a hoodie on, y'all, and I kind of paid the price, so I wasn't 100% sure if I was coming on today, so I kind of did this at the last minute. I got a bad habit of doing stuff at the last minute, especially when it comes to this uh, YouTube business. It's probably because I'm not getting paid off of it, so I don't go crazy over it, so hey, it is what it is. So, y'all, we're going to get into what I do on here. Um, I did drop video last week, and I dropped one this week. We're going to go back to the one I did last week um, and pull a comment. And we're going to do a short on somebody, on a family member today to promote them. So, yeah, you do get, if you do, and if you've been watching the, 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 the lives the last couple of weeks, if you do put a comment, in the whether it's negative or positive it don't matter um that i was um going to play a short on my lives for you and uh show you some love so this is the one unboxing and first impressions of the springfield armory hellcat pro uh, and we're gonna go i don't know if i did uh, let's see, I think I did Crafty Leo. If I'm not mistaken, I think I did. All right, man, it's um, Tr Trish Willie 75. Um, I just really started following him on oh, him. Hold on, he, he don't got nothing on the channel. Hold on, y'all. What's going on? So disregard him. He didn't have nothing. He didn't have no shorts I could play. So we gonna go to. We gonna go Ready Ridge, eleven fifty nine. Oh, did I already do him? Okay, these people ain't got no uh, no videos. So shout out to y'all for commenting, but y'all ain't got no uh, no shorts I could play. Trying to get y'all on. 
All right. We're going to go. I just saw. I am live. Let me make sure I'm live. Let me make sure I am live. Uh, defense. All right. We're going to go. Sil Silverback. How you don't have? How the hell I ain't subscribed to Silverback? Damn. That's crazy. I thought I've been following Silverback all this time. My homeboy STD. It showed you y'all. All right. I just subscribed to my homie. I thought I did. Why y'all ain't got no videos? All right. Well, I'm going to try three people, y'all. Ain't nobody got no videos. Let's go to Shana. All right, y'all. Let's show Shana. Hey, Shana. What's going on? She is one of my uh, moderators. Um, I'm hoping they'll be at the meetup, Jason and Shana. Hey, are y'all coming to the meetup this year? Uh, Jason Jason and Shana? I ain't worried about nothing current, Shana. I can care less about current. Odom Homestead, what's going on? Oh, I met them guys over at... Who page was that? I think that had to be Jigs. I want to say Jigs. Okay. Oh, yeah, they plan to be there. Cool. Because I ain't going to be there next year, y'all. So if y'all don't come this year, I'll, I'll catch y'all the following year in 2026. All right, y'all. We're going to go Shana Ewing. Let me tell y'all something. Just because a person don't post don't mean I don't subscribe to their page. If you come show me love, I'm definitely going to come show you love. Um, But show her some love, man. She does a lot in the two-way community. Prepping. Um. She is a veteran, a Navy. That's the that's the part I, I wanted to go into the Navy. Shout out to the Navy. I wanted to hit the Navy too. Shout out to the Navy. That's the branch I wanted to go into. Uh, New York Outcast, what's going on, Erica? Yes, Erica, I am behaving myself. I, I am. I am. Uh, African Dreaming here. What's up, African Dreaming? Uh, all y'all came through today. I feel special today. All my people's in here. Um, okay. We're going to play Shana video. She's in the AK-47. What is that? Play nice. What's up, Louis? All right, y'all. So definitely go show my sister some love, Shayna, as we call it in the in the two way community. Shayna, go show us some love, y'all. All right, let me get back to the. Uh... All right, y'all. I was um, I, I first wanted to do. Um, how dangerous, and we're gonna do this. I just did freestyle, um, just to put freestyle up here. But, um, and if you want Shane to drop your link so these guys can go subscribe, you and your husband's link, Jason, too, y'all go subscribe to Jason, he's a um, veteran, too. He she just don't she don't post as much as he does, so um, yeah, go show, go show them both some love. Y'all just ain't doing, I don't care about that, okay. Um, so go show love to both of them. Um, because he, he lets, he, he, he supports her in supporting us. I mean, I, I tried to find the right words, y'all. I ain't want to screw that up. So he supports her for supporting, letting, for her using, you know, do, to come and, and, and help us out in the, in the, in the background. So shout out to Shana. I always show her love because she's, she's. Been rocking with me since day one. So um shout out to her and her husband, man. They've been great, great friends since I jumped on YouTube. So I definitely wanted to show her and him his flowers. You know, you always show them their flowers while they living. So shout out to them too, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I don't know. You gotta be real careful with your gun content, because it seems like 
You know, they don't like us. Let's be honest. They don't like us. You see how Chicago was going, and then you see every other day some city trying to ban. And now it's the biggest thing. Now it's assault rifles, as they call them, quote unquote, assault rifles. They're really going out the rifles, period. I know Chicago, they just they just hit them over the head like like hard. Um, but what's going on over there? I hate this. I, I guarantee I'm about to get her, her name wrong. <sighs> Let me calm down. Let me see. Aristine 85. I hope I said that right. Oh, I hope I didn't slaughter her name. But um, it seems to be the biggest thing now is, is really going out to the rifles. Um, and shout out to uh, um, Coop. If you don't know him, he's... Oh, what is Coop? What is Coop's channel? Oh my God! Well, I can't think of Coop's channel right now. Um. All right, Strap House, what's going? All right, Refrigerated Q, man. Thanks for stopping in for sure. I appreciate it. What's up, Willie? Um, but it seems to be the biggest thing now. It's really going. They're really, really pushing the assault, quote unquote, rifle ban now. Um. It's becoming very popular with on in the floor with with states. Um, I know Chicago, they just got hit bad. Who was I looking at the other day? Some what state was trying to do, trying to do the assault ban as well? Um, what's up, Sanchez? Um, but it, it's definitely I've been watching it because of cool. Shout out to cool. If you want to know the legal stuff and what's going on in different states, um, definitely give go over there when he's doing his lives. He definitely go live when um, states are trying to, you know, challenge our gun rights. So um, let me let me get his 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 actual uh, Coop is what we call him, but it, his name is his channel name is totally something else right now. Yeah, that's the bad part. You got to, yeah, damn, you got to fight them. Damn if you do, damn if you don't at this point. CNT designs and arms. That's what it is. Thank you, Shana. I don't know why I couldn't get that together. But uh, go watch him. He does a lot of the legal stuff when they go live. Um, so if, you, if you're already interested in what's going on in different states, um, he covers a lot of that in his lives. So um, definitely go show him some love. And if you want to know anything that's going on with your state or different states surrounding you, uh, he does go up. A lot of times he goes live when they're doing that stuff. And he'll, he'll put it on his page and he'll um, go live with it. So shout out to him. And trying to keep us informed of what's going on around the United States as far as state to state and what they're trying to do as far as gun rights um, and where they're going with a lot of their bull crap, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day. Um, We're going to get into, I think this is going to be something interesting. I had um, a couple of years ago, I don't know if y'all remember this case, but I think he, she was seven years old. Uh, the police was doing a raid and end up shooting a young girl in the head. Um. And I believe now or something like that. It was a couple of years ago. I think it was here in Michigan, if I'm not mistaken. Um, in his report, he said the grandmother lunged at him. And some way, somehow, he, she tells the officer that um, I got to go get my, my granddaughter. She's the only one in here with me. And in that process, he ends up shooting it. I think she's seven. She had to be around seven, nine years old. End up shooting. End up striking her let me let me use the correct words um end up striking her in the head and end up killing it and end up the young lady end up the young girl end up passing away later on due to a due to a um an injury by the um by the fellow officer well by the officer let me just say that um 
Raids are dangerous. Uh, and I want to ask you this question because a lot of people don't understand that. And, and, and let me tell you, I'm not uh, anti-police because I wanted to be a police officer one time in my life. And I actually went for it. So it's, I'm not anti-gun. I'm not anti-police. But we have to hold, especially in that situation, um, and the cops got to understand and this and people are people get their house told they a lot of people get their houses tore up a lot of times where they have to literally go through the go go in their pocket and redo and refix their home after a raid that they had nothing to do with what was going on next door or maybe right around the um right around the corner you know that maybe the house behind you they thought that they was going to their house but they end up hitting your house and they destroy a lot of people's property, but they don't get reimbursed when they fuck up the wrong house. Excuse my language, but when they did when they you know terrorize the wrong house. Um, and, and I like what Sanchez says, accountability. Um, uh, let me let me go and drop this link because I think a lot of people will want to come in and, and really talk about this. You know, I do it. I drop my link first as I come in. I don't really make y'all wait you know if you want to come in come on in i think this is going to be a good time and the only reason i started talking about this is because then i was looking on youtube and that case ended up popping back up um but um even with with what's the name i think right now chicago is trying to sue glock for for switches which, you know what I'm saying? It, it makes, it makes, that's like me going to Porsche. That's like me going to Porsche, right? And Porsche sells me the car, but I go get a third party to put some in that was never made by Porsche. But I'm going to come back and sue Porsche. Why are we going to, why are we suing, and, and, and it's crazy that y'all rather, instead of lock, I ain't going to say lock, because I hate, I hate, I'm not, a, I don't think nobody is a cage animal, but some of these guys, and I'm going to tell you this, I'm not trying to be funny, but I know somebody right now that I used to work with, walking around, and I want to say it, this incident happened maybe a year to three years ago. It hasn't. <laughs> and I don't want to put nobody, you know, uh, out there like that. But it, it, it's almost like y'all will go and sue the manufacturers then doing. <sighs> Hold on, y'all. Yeah, so and that's another one. We have people, I, and I don't mind somebody coming in, in in the United States doing it the right way, going to get your paperwork, coming over here being a, a um. What DJ play nice? That too, that that too, that that that's the that's the biggest thing they they stand they in in. I don't, it, it, we, mm, that immunity is, 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 is a lot because I think somebody with the uh, Oxfield shooting, they just got through um, with that trial with the, with the young man and his parents. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the parents are trying to go after the school because the school didn't take the part, the, the, um, didn't take the, the, once they had a meeting with that that child's parent, they should have sent him home. Until he got evaluated by a professional, he should have never went back to school. They should have made the parents take him home. So now that now the parents that have lost their 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 um their children is trying to sue the school. Now you can't. I was I was looking at, at this on the news. Is 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 immunity too when it comes to the school system 
or, or the, the staff or the school system, period, when somebody comes in and they shoot up a school and, you know, and you want to sue a school, you can't. In that case, I believe they sh they should be ha they should have the right to sue the school because the school knew what was going on with this young man before it even happened. They let it get out of control. They let it get out of control, and then they have a meeting with. And, and from what I'm heard, I think Tony told me this. We we already discussed this a couple weeks ago, but they kind of went over to school and went to the, the to the um uh school board administration and got him back in school. Well, school board should have told them, hold on, let me get with the school and see what's going on with this young man before they let him back in school. So it, it was a lot of failures really with me with the um, school system period when it came to that particular case here in Michigan. Um, the, the, that in itself, the, 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 the school system dropped the ball on that. And I'm going I'm, to I'm strictly put that and put all fault within the school system because Once he had that meeting, they should have told him and the parents, I don't care what's going on with your son. We had this meeting. He's having this, you know, and this is periods of them piling up evidence uh, against this young man before they even had the meeting with the with the parents. So the school, the school board administration or, you know, they should have came back to the school, see what was going on, grab the evidence and then got back with the parents and suspended him. Until for at least until he had some professional help or some, it was just it was just for what I've been reading. The school system dropped the ball totally on that situation, and I'm a, and I'm a, I'm gonna leave it at that with that. But that's it. That, that's what I'm saying, Tony. That's what I'm saying. That's like me going and put some aftermarket on, on a Porsche and then going back and saying that Porsche fucked. I mean, messed up my car. No, you had somebody a third party put that on, so you go sue the third party. So it, it's it's man, it's rules and I don't know, I, I don't know. Yep, lawyers do find victims all day long. I agree. That that too, I think it is. I think it is the insurance thing too. I think you write uh refrigerated queue i think that was another thing with the, with the insurance as well i think their insurance will shoot up if they got sued every time something went wrong i think that was another reason why they can't say they can't the parents can't sue the school system <laughs> did they I don't know. I don't know why Porsche came to mind. DJ play nice. I'm sorry. I am in the Motor City. I could have did Chevy Ford. You know, Chrysler. I could have did one of those. Oh, we know how they got in the country. That's true too. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm very behind in comments. If y'all want to, I drop the link again. If you want to jump in here and let's talk about it, um, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll drop it again. But I, yeah, I, I think raids are dangerous because a lot of times they make the mistake on the wrong house, and sometimes it's, it's prop property damage that's done to the home which the homeowner that has nothing to do with what's going on with the police department has to come out their own pocket and re, you know, fix the damages that the police officers have done, like your door. Boom. When I, when they knock it off the hinges, now you gotta, you gotta reframe your door. You just can't throw a door back on it, on, on, on your house. You have to tear that frame out at this point and reframe it and then put the door, put another door in. So, um, you know, it, it's unless they are absolutely sure, 100 percent sure. I don't think a a, uh, a order, a rate order needs to be um, issued until they absolutely know exactly where they're going and what they're doing. What's up, hot tub? What up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Hey, 
you speaking on the uh, raids, did you see what happened when they raided the ra uh, rapper Afro Man's house in Ohio? Uh-uh. I ain't see that one. So somebody called and made an anonymous report that Afro Man had somebody, he had kidnapped somebody and had drugs all in the house and the police came in on his private property with no warrant, snatched his uh, gate off his, his uh, driveway entrance, kicked the door in, went through his house, stole his lemon cake. He made, <laughs> he made a whole album about this. I mean, he got video of, of the actual raid and everything. And that's when they found out he had um, video cameras in his house. They snatched his cameras out. Oh, of they course went, they had to do that. They went looking through, but he had backup cameras, so he had cameras on him as they snatched the cameras out. Wow. He is now on tour selling merchandise with the pictures of the officers on there. He done made songs off of he made more. He said he made more money. Off of them doing that, then it caught then the damage that they caused. But the way he handled that was perfect, bro. I encourage anybody to go on there and look up. Just type in uh, uh Afro Man Lemon Cake song. Okay, I'm gonna look at it. He rap about the whole incident, man. It is hilarious, but it underscores what these uh, you know the the the, the, the insidiousness of, of a lot of these raids. Because a lot of times they're predicated off of what are these anonymous tips. You don't have any verifiable evidence that you're going in there. You didn't verify that you had the right residence a lot of times. And the outcome we see over and over and over again is that there's a lot of property damage. And in some unfortunate cases, a lot of innocent people get killed. So these no knock warrants need to stop. Yeah, I agree. Airplane, what's going on, brother? Um. And, and it's the same thing, bro, with the school system, with the parents trying to sue the school system. And I found out that you can't sue the school system when they've been when they have been negligent and doing their job. So man, it's crazy. They made it to where the police are no longer a uh, uh, law enforcement body. They're no different from any criminal guy at this point in yeah. most places. And we got to. I know it's a bag to boo people, but we got to be honest about this. It's a, it's, it, 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 we used to say, well, it's a couple of bad apples. No, the bad apples are the ones in charge. It's yeah, a allow it. Of, and the yeah. good cops, unfortunately, are staying quiet for fear of, of their jobs. And I get that, but I don't get that. You know, I know, I recently so, just saw a young lady. She got fired from the fire, I mean, from the police department. Um, off being honest or something, they end up firing her. You know, yeah, I saw that, the black lady. Yeah. Go ahead, Tata. No, what, no, what, what, no, was her, what was her deal? I can't remember what her deal was, but I remember she did get fired. So they had an officer, her, uh, uh, I think she was the sergeant, and one of her subordinates um, was jacking the cops. They had a suspect, and she jacked, he jacked him up, he was hitting him and everything, and she, she stepped in and stopped it. Another officer pushed her. Now she's the superior officer on scene. Oh wow! And, and all the officers basically pushed her back, and so she filed a report on the on on her subordinates. Well, her superiors ended up reprimanding her, and she ended up getting fired. And see that that's that's the thing. And I tell a lot of people this: um, if you want a cop to step up. We have to, we as a people, um, as a whole, have to surround that cop with support and we have to make sure that cop gets her job back because now she has put her, her livelihood on the line, but we're not, you can't have it both ways. When they speak up, we need to be behind them 100%. Well, man, we, we so far behind the power curve. I think it was in, um, I want to say like 2006, 2005, 2006. When the FBI dropped the report uh, and said that law enforcement had been uh, infiltrated by by white supremacist groups all over the country. Oh, I seen that. I watched a documentary on that. And nobody batted the eye. So now here we are, down there, twenty years later. Yep. And these other the end. We see cases like the unfortunate event where the uh, seven year old got shot. 
these are the end results of you not doing anything about it. You as a federal government, you saw that in 2005. Why didn't you do anything about it? Mm-hmm. And that's where I got, I got my issue is with, with, with government, especially Democratic governments, because when they identify this, you have a whole Justice Department that's supposed to take care of that. And they don't. They'll put out a report and then it's crickets and you won't do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's the, if, if the federal government is supposed to be the checks and balances on the local on on local PDs and and misconduct, mm-hmm. they're not doing that. They're now, not. I'm gonna throw something out there to you. They they already talking about making these illegal and putting uh putting them into the police department. Now, we already know what they do with us. Now, what do you think is gonna happen to everybody? Once they're in in uh, positions of authority in the police department, because you can say what you want, they don't have no loyalty to black, white, yellow, nothing. Nothing. And you go, it's, it's only gonna get worse. So America is digging this hole with itself deeper and deeper. It just it it, it would be cheaper and safer for everybody if it's just to do the right thing, treat everybody equal. Yeah, because we ain't asking for no special treatment. No, we have to be treated equally. Absolutely, that's it. But that's just my two cents on it, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna hit this link again if anybody else want to jump in. Um, I just I, I wasn't gonna go live, but I kind of felt good this morning when I woke up, so I decided to go live. But um, we have a lot of issues. <laughs> Here in America, and yeah, I don't know sure the higher ups want to fix them issues. Let's be real, because <laughs> it benefits them. If we don't fix the issues, then it, it continues to benefit them. Oh yeah, our politicians want to keep us scared uh, on, yeah. on both sides. The, the the Democrats use Republican as the boogeyman, and the Republican use black people and, and uh, to you to 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 to, to make their boogeyman. So the government rules us by fear. Mm-hmm. And it's not one particular party, it's both parties. Both of them. Yeah, you ask me. What's going on, Mira? Yeah, and, and you I, know, if you know about politics, you know, politics, they, it, it's a selfish game. I don't know, another politic is not going to look out for another politic unless they got something to gain. And that's oh, kind yeah. of the game they play. You know, if you don't know politics, you, you better get to know them. Because <laughs> it's a dirty game. Unless you got some that can benefit them, they ain't even trying to look your way. So Money. if you want if you want your agenda pushed in politics, you got to have money. Now yeah. that's a hard game to play for the average person on the on the international on the um, from national level. It ain't hard to do on the local level. You can no. buy your poly local politician for ten thousand dollars. Get a couple of people, get ten people together, put to put up a thousand dollars. You pretty much got the mayor in your pocket, right? You got a DA in your pocket. So you know, if we all know what the problem is, and I don't want to dwell on the problem, I give you solutions. You you got an issue in your local in your local city that you don't like? Go by the district that. attorney, yeah. You got police officers that 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 that's, that's beating up your folks. Buy your district attorney and tell them now I'm giving you this money. So this is a donation because you got to specify this a campaign donation. But what I want in return is the removal or prosecution of these police officers that did X, Y, and Z. See, we got to start playing the game and how other other groups of people play the game. They play the game with their pockets. Yeah, because a lot of us playing checkers and they playing chess. But it Hell comes yeah. to <laughs> Get on that checkerboard. I mean, that, that chessboard. Oh, y'all can't hear me, New York. Let me go up. I, I just came in. You know, I come in every Sunday just to holler at you, man. So if I ain't oh, coming to school, I just drop off. Yeah, you know, I appreciate you. All right, man. All right. How's up? Later. Yeah. Um, but that is true, Sanchez. Um, you can't sue them, but they can they can bring the local uh uh, uh 
child protective service out to your home and, and tell you what to do with your children. You know, and I, I do agree. So, man, I think unless they, the no-knock warrant, they really need to go ahead and just take that off the books. Because that no-knock warrant um, then did more damage to homes and then, you know, they done did, they, um, what's up, Jova? I forgot to say something to Jova. What's going on, brother? Um. And they have caused a lot of casualties for the no knock warrants. Um, so to me, you know, if you if you ain't been surveilling, if you ain't in, if you ain't in surveillance that home within, say, I give you three months. So if you ain't had nobody looking at that home within three months that you're trying to get a no knock warrant for, then you're not getting one. That would just be me personally, because you need to know exactly what house you're hitting at all times. Uh, because you're you're dealing with you're, you're dealing with lives and, and, and livelihood uh, with a no knock warrant. Um, hey, there go my blind twin Geneva. I mean, the G is silent. My bad, Geneva. I'm retired, Geneva. What's up, OG Tank? Um, so to me. I believe that the no knock warrant needs to be pulled from police all over the United States. Um, and I believe unless it's unless they absolutely see somebody in danger, then I can see you going in and, you know, getting that person out of danger. Uh, yeah, that's what. Yep. I'll cast a lot of damage to and at the wrong places um so you know you gotta to, to me if you want to do a warrant you gotta at least sit on the house for at least three months before you get a warrant unless they are unless you see them bringing somebody out in the, you know in a bag or they they transporting somebody with a bag over the head then yeah i can see you moving in and you know kind of dealing with that situation but a lot of these no-knock warrants are, are costing people their lives and, and, and costing them uh, property damage that a lot of them can't afford to to to, to repair their home after they did so much damage. <laughs> she said, she said her mama extra. <laughs> Hey, I think I'm extra too, Geneva, because I'm my, my my son. My wife wanted to name my son a, a junior. Um, my dad, he didn't name me and my brother Junior. He named us individuals. So I always had the mindset once I had my son that I did not want him to have my my name. Um, because I wanted him to be an individual. So I, I, me and my wife went back and forth over my son's name. So I, I I'm, I'm be real. I, our, his dad was a little extra. So both of my, me and my son name is Jamal Antonio Sims. That's our name. But mine is J-A-M-A-L. My son's name is J-A-M-A-L-L. -L. A lot of people might as well say you might as well name it a second because when you look at both our names, you might as well, when you look at, I mean, I got only one. He got two L's on his name. So it's almost like he's a second anyway. But I, I just... I don't know. I know. I know a lot of guys that, that that name their children after them, especially their sons. But I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird like that. I didn't want to name my son um, after me. But my wife really, 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 um, really wanted to name him after me. So I did name him after me, but I just put an extra L on his name. So I guess I was a little extra. So I understand what your mama was doing. <laughs> That's true too hot. That's true too hot, Tug. A lot of neighborhoods 
Um, and even here in Detroit, they have the, um, what the hell do they call it? The green light uh, program, where if you will own a business for a discount, you can get that. Now, what they do is if you go to a certain business and they are part of the green light um, program, they give them a discount. But with that discount there, the camera is is automatically linked to the police station. So anything that's happening around that particular business, it's, it's, it, it's being monitored by the police department anyway because you're part of the green light the green light program so a lot of that stuff they have access to anyways because i honestly every i think this bit they might have did this about two maybe three four years ago with the green light program here in michigan um a lot of each in the in the inner city in detroit a lot of businesses have that green light so you know that it, um you know if you go in that store, you are being monitored by the Detroit Police Department. I mean, this is particularly in Detroit. You are being monitored. Uh, that that particular camera that they got you on is being monitored by the Detroit Police Department. And I'm telling you, they have some clear cameras. When I say tech uh, technology, they put it in, in this round white thing, and then you got a black bubble that sits there, and then you got the camera. You can't even see the camera, but the camera see you. So, you know, we got a lot of that within the in the inner city, where they are. They are um, a lot of businesses are a part of the green light program here in Michigan. <laughs> OG take great. Say you like me, OG Tank. I tried to get as close as I can. So we we did um well see that's the problem, uh Jova. Most of the day they're using the no-knock warrants. They're using them, but don't really need the no knock warrant. But just because it's there, and and say if that particular cop is one to really get in there, cops and judges know each other all the time. So you got cops probably calling a judge in the middle of the night to get you know, or either going going to their home and having them sign for the no knock warrant. So. You know that that's just what it is. You know, I mean, police officers and judges. Let, let, let's get let let's let's be real. I'm quite sure judges got police officers' names and numbers on speed dial, and I'm sure cops got judges' names and numbers on speed dial. They communicate all the time. If something happened, they need some help, or they need some 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 legal aid, or they know somebody that knows somebody. So they're, they're, they're not using it to me what it needs to be used for. They're using it anytime they feel because it's, it's, it's available. And, you know, when you don't check them boxes or check that person, taking advantage of something that, that it shouldn't be used for, then you're going to get a lot of this mess that's going on now. Yep, see? Yep. If you let them install a camera, that's it. Please. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some big cops here in Detroit that, you know, I, I work in a garage where they mechanics fix city um, police vehicles. I mean, some of them guys come in there looking, oh, I'm like, boy, you ain't running out to nobody. Ain't no way in hell your big ass running out to nobody. What's going on, Woods? I'm sorry, man. I ain't acknowledge you. I just realized you was in here. Um, from some of the the the, the stuff that I've seen on the news, um, uh, because we just recently had a guy shoot up three people in the gas station, 
and the, and and I think that was part of the green light program. I'm not. I'm quite sure by you being di- uh, connected to the police uh, program to the green light program. I'm quite sure that 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 is something that they're able to do. I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm quite sure they're able to be able to pull that if they need be, or they're looking for a suspect, or say the suspect came in the gas station. I'm quite sure they can use the facial recognition whenever they want to. Let's that, just be real. Was I believe whenever they want to say if a, a cop gets shot, say I mean, and I'm not I'm not advocating violence towards the police. Just to just make that clear, I'm not doing that. But say, uh, officer, he got his vest on. He's maybe going to get some chips or a pop from the gas station, and somebody just approaches him and shoots him in his in his vest. And say they're at a green light uh, gas station. I, their cameras are close. From what I seen in that gas station with the guy that shot the three guys, that pic, that that video was so clear. I believe yes. If they need be, like I said, if it was an incident where a fellow officer got wounded, and you already know how they are about their officers getting wounded. I believe if they're in that particular gas station where he's got wounded and they have the green light program, I believe in that case they will utilize the facial uh the facial recognition program system. I believe they would. Then they Yeah, I'm so far behind in comments. I, they do need. They need. I mean, I, I I believe they could do that. You know, what's what's all, what's all the mess that goes on? Jova, I, I do watch a lot of cop shows. I do. I do. I watch a lot of Forty Eight. And if you know, um, a couple years ago, I applied for the Detroit Police uh, Department. I applied for the Wayne County Sheriff Department. So I have wanted to always be a police officer uh, even when i was a kid um shout out to my cousin when i was going for the detroit police department out of state he was going for another police department he's been in there i, I can't remember but i i didn't kind of posted my journey throughout my youtube uh journey but um i believe He's probably been in the force about four to about six years, I want to say. Somewhere in there. So at the time that I was trying to go, he was going. He ended up graduating from the um, police academy and ended up becoming a police officer. Um, Shout out to my cousin, man. Stay safe out there in the streets. But um, this year... I am going to go back. I'm, I'm I'm going back to apply for the police department again for the Detroit Police Department. Um, so for me, I don't. I always respected the badge because I always, as a kid, wanted to become a cop. That was my dream job to become a cop. Huh? You know, say what you can. What about it? But I always want to be a cop. So I am going this year. Uh, maybe within the next week or two fill out the application again and uh, i got so close to coming to the academy i had to do my background interview and then after the background interview um i probably had to do a couple more things and then i would be i would have been in the academy graduating right along with my cousin but things didn't work out um talking to a couple officers the last couple years they kept on telling me to go forward go back forward um you got so far you was just that close from getting into the academy so I have now recently wanting to go back and do it again because this is something I always wanted to do. So I'm going to go for it again. I'm going to walk out by faith and, and hopefully everything goes the way I want it to go this time. So I'm, I'm about to start back conditioning my body to, to pass the physical agility test again and uh, do the things I need to do in order to become a police officer. So let's get one thing to us. I'm not anti-police I, I always wanted to be a cop and um i'm gonna go for it again this year and see what happens so 
Um, that's my plan within the next couple of weeks. Um, hopefully by the end of this summer or the middle of the summer, I am on my way to the police uh, academy and hopefully graduating sometime next year. That's my goal. That's my plan. We'll see what happens, y'all. Teacher has a shot. Yeah, they do. I think they do, uh, Alcan. <laughs> See, there you go. That's what I was saying. Absolutely. They, 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 they kids grow up with each other. I've seen cases where, you know, lawyers, judges, and police officers, let's get one thing straight. All the kids, they all grow up. To, I mean, they go to birthday parties, they birth kids, kids, birthday parties, you know, when kids are born. So they, they all are connected through the justices, not only through the justices, but they know each other personally. They get to know each other personally outside the courtroom, outside the, the, the uniform, outside the, the, the lawyer's office. And if they, like like I just said a minute ago, it is nothing for a police officer to go to a judge and he's maybe done, let's say, had to testify in a couple, you know, homicides or, you know, or, or burglary or, or somebody getting assaulted and build that relationship with that judge. Or build that relationship with that that lawyer. That lawyer has built that and built plenty of relationships with judges to try to maybe you know one day get one of their clients a light sentence or whatnot. So it's a game that they play, and like me and uh, Hot Tub was saying, man, they playing chess while we playing checkers, and, and you know we getting we we getting getting tore up at the end though. John mortgages and police. <laughs> yep, there you go. He he playing the game that they playing. He playing he playing chess right along with him. He ain't playing checkers. He playing chess. But um, yeah, don't don't let don't let it fool you, man. They 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 build relationships amongst each other. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think they do that here too, uh Woods. I think here in Michigan they do do that as well. Where if they hear a gunshot, they can triangulate where that gunshot comes, or they can get closest. I mean, like real, real close to where that gunshot went off. So, yeah, I think they do have that here as well. Um, I think they have that now in a lot of cities now with the um, with the gunshot um, uh, cam or, or sound system or whatever it's called microphone. Hey y'all, that's my that's my blind twin. Yep, Mira, they do it all the time, man. We 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 still stuck on on checkers. And they playing chess, man. We getting ran. No homo. And that and that. And that's another thing, man. They, they. If you don't, and that one thing my auntie always told me, and I always keep this, and I tell my children this, y'all, get to know legally what you can and what you can't do when it comes to police and using, like as DJ Play Night says, using certain things without your um, authorization. But if you don't know that, then you get taken advantage of, and you know, and now you you pissed off. Well. Get to know the gun laws in your state and surrounding states, you know, wherever you go. 
and especially you need to especially know the ones as far as two way or getting you know if anything happens anything happened to you while you're in police custody you know you need to know what you can and can't do um legally to to, to um deal with what's going on uh when it comes to the justice system we make that mistake of not knowing what's going on and then when they hit us over the head we looking crazy um you know reach out you know we're here in two way we got a couple you know family you know family members that you know if i if i get jammed up or something i ain't, I ain't scared to call my you know howard j who is here in michigan you know where i such and such you know this this happened you know so that, you know if you're not 100 percent sure if you got a lawyer in your family ask some questions you know see if they're willing to give you that that information for free i mean try if not then you know start start browsing that web go to to go to the um like I, I, you know i can i can go to state of michigan and, and, and you know figure out certain gun things that i can do and can't do but if you don't plant that information yourself that knowledge yourself then you are bound to get screwed over i mean that, i'm being honest you are bound to get screwed over by police and the justice system you don't let nobody tell you what the law is you go research that for yourself so if anything was to happen or even with this if you have carry insurance call your carry insurance company you're paying them they should either be able to give give you an answer within that phone call or come within the next before that week is out come with some type of answer call their ass back you paying your money for them to protect you and if you need a question asked, hey, my thing is, if you don't know right then and there, get back with me. And then until they get back with you, do the research on your, do the research yourself. We, we get too, we get stuck in what other people tell us instead of us doing the research ourselves. Yeah, you could tell me anything all day long, but until I research myself, I'm just going to take it as a person telling me something. And then if I do the, re when I do the, not then, but when I do the research and you're right, then I can come back and acknowledge, okay, you was right. But don't never let nobody feed you bullshit and you don't go check that information on your own. And we get, we get, we get caught up in that rabbit hole. And a lot of times, once you get your ass into that trouble and you ain't got that money, you ain't got that guap, you ain't got that, 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 that green. Oh yeah. They're going to, oh, take this, take this plea agreement, take that plea agreement. Because one thing about a quarter point lawyer, they gonna get paid, paid whether you get off the case or if you go go to jail for the case. They don't give a damn which way it goes. Uh, I'm just I'm just being honest because I almost got railroaded by the justice system when I was in college, and luckily my parents had the money to afford me a, a lawyer, and and they end up throwing off both throwing out both cases before even taking me to trial. But if you don't know. And if you don't have them type of funds, start doing that research on your own. Don't let nobody put your ass in a, in a, in a barrel and roll your ass down the damn hill. And your ass looking crazy. You know, Mary, Mary, they do it all the time, brother. That's what, that's another thing. New York is absolutely right. I don't see, man, people, people are... <laughs> And I watch 48 all the time because I see how they get these young boys in this room and they lie to them all the time. And that's part of what a cop can do. Unfortunately, they can lie to you all day long. But the first thing they say is don't lie to me. You playing checkers and they playing, uh, they playing chess and then it got you right then and there. You ain't got to say nothing to them. Hey, prove it. I want a lawyer. But a lot of these guys get in there, they get to talk and they get to crying and they, well, you know, you know, it'll be better if you let it off your chest. And the next thing you know, within within 30 minutes, they didn't, they didn't got them. Within 30 minutes to an hour, they didn't, they, didn't, they you know, they, you like a fish that's, that's hooked on that, on that, on that uh, fishing pole. They got you. That's why it's important if you. I wish everybody can make an honest living, but a lot of people are not going to make an honest living. So my thing is. You should shut the hell up, 
use your Fifth Amendment, shut the hell up. If you're doing something you ain't got no business doing, put you some money up to where if, if you do get locked up and, and trust in somebody that will use that, bail you out, and you go and take your butt to trial. But you don't let nobody put you in a, in, in a rabbit hole and then bury your ass and then you're trying to figure out a way to get out. When well, there's no other way to get out but the way you went in. That's true. But they get these young boys in there all the time. Yeah, that's true. But I use I use a lot of that as a concrete, even with my, my children. Um I, I I use a lot of that to kind of get them in a mindset that you trust nobody out here in these streets. Friends, if you got a friend getting in your car, if you believe that they got something on them, you check their ass before they get in your car. If they don't want to get checked, you leave them where the fuck they standing at. Because it's easy to get in trouble, but it's hard as hell to get out. And if you ain't got no money, then guess what? You part of the system. And that's what exactly what you're going to be. You're going to be an inmate with a number on your backside. So I use a lot of these cop shows, especially with my children, to get them to understand that, dude, just because you get in that, that interrogation room, you shut the fuck up. You, hey, I need a lawyer. You call me and your mother, and we'll deal with the, with the situation at hand. But you don't give them the you don't give them the gun and the ammunition and load it up for them and then and then give them give them the gun and then expect them not to use it. Let's be real honest. They're not gonna be honest with you. So hey, give me a lawyer. If you can prove it, then hey, it is what it is. But if you can't, deal with it when we deal with it. But um Atlanta, I got, I got, I got, uh, my wife's cousin live in Atlanta. But see, I, I got this house, though, uh, hot tub. I ain't been. <laughs> I'm an immigrant. Y'all hit that like button. Um, cops been so. That's an interesting one. It is, it, but, 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 but I'm going to tell you this. One thing that I've learned, a lot of these jobs that they need to pay, they don't pay. A teacher does not make a lot of money, but she goes to school. She gets herself through school and she has to deal with certain badass kids. I don't think they get paid enough with the bullshit they got to deal with. But guess what? A lot of my teachers, a lot of my teach, a lot of my my children's teachers that I've met has a passion for teaching. You're not going to get paid a whole lot to be a teacher. But you're going to have to deal with a lot of bullshit. You're going to have to deal with a lot of stinking ass kids. You have to deal with they 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 retarded ass mama and daddy for a little pay. So some of the jobs that you and and to me, being a teacher is a very dangerous job these days. So I, as long as you understand, and we was talking about this the other day, uh, me and a coworker. As long as you understand the risk, and to me, if you treat a lot of people with respect, a lot of the stuff that the cops are going through, they don't—they really wouldn't have to worry about. But long, and you got to understand the dangers that comes along with being a cop. I'm not trying to be a superhero. I know I have two children. I have a wife. I have to get home to. So my understanding is, ninety percent of the time, you're gonna have to is communication in becoming a police officer. I strongly believe that. 
the way you talk to people, the way you approach people. Are you going to count on some assholes as being a cop? Absolutely, positively. You are. That's part of the job. But a lot of these cops get in here because they want to be power hungry. And when you're power hungry, you make a lot of mistakes on these streets that'll get you, you know what. So a lot of that to me, by me always wanting to be a cop, long as I treat you with respect, am I going to get respect back every single time? No, I'm not. And I understand that. That's why I always wanted to be a cop, because I understand the, I understood the risk. That's why I wanted to join the Navy. I understand. I understood the risk of being out on sea in that boat, being attacked by by foreign uh, attackers or whatever you want to call it. So I always understood the risk that I always anything I wanted to get myself into. I always understood the risk that I was taking in order to become what I wanted to become at that time. So to me, being a cop, long, I, I believe. 65% of your time, you as long as you're polite, as long as you treat a, another man or woman with respect, you know, well, I'm having a bad day. Okay, well, you know, have a better one, you know, and kind of slow your tail down because the next one might not be so nice. That's all I can do. Or I can, if you, if you went too far out of line, if I got to write you up, you know, say if you violated three traffic violations and i say you, you know you 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 say you ran the red light um say you was going 10 to 20 miles over the speed limit and say your kid won't properly buckled in a belt well i'm gonna give you a ticket for one i might not give you a ticket for all three but i'm gonna give you a ticket for one just to say hey I'm not gonna give you one to get to put points on your license, but I'm gonna give you the one your kid not buckle and properly in the in the seat. I'm gonna give you a break, but the next one might not. So just slow down and, and and watch what you're doing. So to me, it's a lot of communication when it comes to being a cop. To me, now I may be wrong, but at the end of the day, they pay your salary. At the end of the day, a lot of you know people are going. Everybody goes through something, and if you understand that, then. I believe, um, and I'm going to say my cousin, uh, we pretty much grew up with my grandmother, so I kind of know him. we kind of brothers. We're real close. And I would never think, you know, I'm not going to say never. I couldn't imagine my, my cousin doing something he ain't got no business doing. And, I, you know, like I said, I could be wrong. But, it, you know, that's just what it is. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm so behind on comments. What's going on, Bub? If y'all want to, uh, I'm about to get out of here in, in about in about 23 more minutes. I don't want to. I don't want to run all the way to three. That's not my goal today. I'm, I'm not trying to run all the way to three o'clock. I know this 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 topic is getting. I'm kind of enjoying talking to you guys, so I'm, I'm gonna push it to two thirty. But we gonna get out of here by two thirty. If you want to, I did just drop the comment. Um. If you want to um, talk about, we will first had got on. OG That's true. I agree. Wild Williams, what's going on, brother? I ain't seen you in a minute. I'm glad you're doing good, brother. I'm glad you uh, decided to join me, brother. I appreciate you. Yeah, I think I'm going to do here in Oak Park as well. Oh, Shannon, thanks. I appreciate you. Yeah, it ain't nothing new. But I was just saying, you know, that is just part of the, you know, like you say, build a relationship and you use that relationship, you know. You use that relationship to your advantage. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. I mean, I'm not hating on them. You know, if it's an easier way for me to do my job, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to try to do it the easy way and see if that works for me. I mean, that's just, that's just, that's just the way, we, you know, you, if you're smart, you're programmed. I'm not going to say program because nobody's programmed, but 
we, you know, in my job, I try to take the easy route. I'm not trying to do, you know, if it's easier for me to do it this way and somebody shows me and I'm able to master it that way and I feel like it is a lot easier, then, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go and do it that way. So I totally agree. Y'all, I'm so far behind my bags, y'all. I am so far behind on these comments. Y'all don't kill me. What's going on, New York? Hey, what's happening, man? Not much. Here, pop in and give you a couple words uh, about the whole cop thing. Uh, it's not that I'm a cop. I did uh, go to college for it, but I never, never used it. Uh, honestly, made more money in construction, and that's why I was saying locally, I don't think it's really worth it unless you're near a border because... A lot of the times they, you know, do seizures on vehicles that come through. You can call in. If there's a kid in the car, you call in the uh, officer that deals with that. Basically, you call everybody you can. And and each division or section of the department can claim a certain portion of what's acquired from a vehicle. If they got a car door stack full of cash. And basically, that's, you know gets pulled like the whole civil forfeiture thing and basically some of those funds get allocated back towards the department so you can end up with better pay better uniforms better cars uh more assets for investigations basically it's yeah you make more money in those cases so uh i would hinder you know we do need good cops we honestly do. I know a lot of people are just straight up against cops, but uh, I'm not. I, I don't like the bad cops. I can tell you that. Um, but a lot of the times, you know, a guy will go in trying to be a good cop and you get stuck with a bunch of guys that, you know, are looking at guys, girls that have their pensions in mind over people's civil liberties. So uh, that's where it becomes kind of a team thing and uh people cover each other like any team does and uh things can kind of get a little questionable so um it's a hard thing in my opinion to stay clean in because i don't think you can be clean if you're watching your friends do do shit dirty you know what I mean? so um yeah i wish you luck towards it though i really do because like i said uh we need we need good cops out there reasonable people um not just instantly trigger happy or power tripping. Uh, you know, society could use that. Uh, personally, I'd like to see it back more towards community policing where you have officers that know the people in the neighborhood. Uh, there's a line of respect with the kids, with the community versus, uh, you know, police that just drive around and harass everybody. But, different departments do it differently so uh you know there's a lot to that but i do wish you luck yeah like i said uh something does need to change i'm not with that whole immunity thing like dj was bringing up earlier i think cops are just regular people on a job um, we all choose a job you know um so therefore you choose the risk the responsibility that comes with that job so yeah. i don't think you should have any free pass because you screw up yeah, and that's the same thing with a doctor because a doctor has to have insurance in order to, you know, do certain to insure themselves so they won't get sued. You know, and if that's the case, well, why does doctors have to get insurance, you know, if they make a mistake on the table? I mean, and I understand, you know what I'm saying? It's all it's always a risk to get on somebody's operating table. But at the same time, y'all will pull his license if, if some major happens, you know, and it maybe it might be a little small incident. And, you know, y'all pull him and he have to go get, you know, his lawyers or whatnot and, you know, fight his, get it, fight for it to keep his license. But we don't do the same thing for cops. You know, if you get on this job and you understand the risk of this job, like I said before, a lot of your job with, with, with copying and like you say, it's, it's all about communication. You know, the way you work at, as long as you know the people that you work with, a lot of times you can get people to come to you and give you information. Yep, yep. A lot of people volunteer information because you know in most cases people don't write for brog you know they just uh they don't want to catch any any crap over it but in most cases people know the difference and uh, a lot of people 
like you hear about bad all the time. Bad makes the news. It's everywhere, but uh, good never gets any of the spotlight. So there is plenty of good people out there. Yeah, I remember uh, a couple years ago I was uh, looking at my home time and this uh, um, this, this this white cop. Um, they ended up doing a special on him, but he would literally they literally had videos of him going and playing with the children on the playground, having a good time, getting to know his community, and that's where we need to go back to cops is willing to go into them communities and you know spend some time with them them adolescents that's at risk you know especially in in poor you know neighborhoods within the city if you work in that neighborhood you know if you if you just say, say hey we're gonna be at the park and you know get a couple of your cop buddies together and throw a big barbecue for that neighborhood and get to know that neighborhood i think a lot of that stuff you know, and you get the OGs, the grandmothers and the mothers and, you know, the OG fathers there that, that know right from wrong and that's willing to stand on right. A lot of this stuff that you see in these communities will be gone regardless. But, you know, we got to get back to looking at each other as human beings first. You know, we can't have the police that's on a power trip. You got the badge. Now you think you almighty. Just because you got a badge don't mean you almighty. And, and you, you need to get back to understanding that you are po you are policing the public and you took that oath to make sure you protect the public at all times. So if you don't want to do that, then that shouldn't have been a job you got into in the first place. Yeah, totally agree. I think there's a lot of, a lot of police that, uh, probably shouldn't be, you know, once, once you, they realize what it really is, uh, they, they probably shouldn't be officers in my opinion. I think there's, there's quite a few like that, that uh, but they're in there now. So they're just going to do their time or whatever. And that's where it becomes a, an issue on the public. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame. I personally would like to see, you know, things the other way where teachers, police, anybody of authority that violates it should be, hit double you know mm -hmm. with, with penalties in my opinion uh yeah you were entrusted with our children are entrusted with society you know you, you should uh you shouldn't have extra protection you should be getting hammered even harder in my opinion And that's true. I think my stepmother, she ended up, because I, I, I grew up with a teacher, my dad's third wife, when I moved up here to Michigan with my dad and my brother and my sister. He ended up marrying my my stepmother, which was his third, second wife. Um, And let's be totally honest. Um, that, that That is absolutely true. They don't work during the summer. Um, but That's a hard one. I, I, I always, I always thought the teachers should get paid a, a little bit more than what they're getting paid. Um, I don't know. A, a judge has to go to school for so many years and get paid so much. Um, a teacher has to go to school so many years. You know, the master to get your masters. You know, you got to keep working towards it, and then you end up. You still don't get paid what what it's worth to be a teacher to me, regardless. Yeah, I, I think teachers should get paid a lot more i think there should be performance evaluations though they shouldn't be protected by the union teach for the tests things like those but uh in the end teachers you know they're kind of responsible for the future of our society uh what's you know children are most influential at a younger age so that's where a lot of people screw up and they don't want to discipline kids young, all this shit. They wait till they're older and then everything's a fight. But, you know, it's a lot easier to create good habits than to try to correct bad habits. So yeah. if you start that young, you know, and you think about how much time teachers spend with kids, uh, they're a huge influence. So they're they're really a big part of, of your child's life, whether you, you want to acknowledge it or not. So I do think they should get a lot more than they do. Uh, when you compare, you know, sports, entertainment, what those people get paid for entertainment versus, you know, a doctor, a teacher, a firefighter, I think it's completely ridiculous. I mean, completely ridiculous. You're talking apples and oranges here. Yeah, uh, Mira, yeah, I kind of realized I can't say certain words. I might have been kind of watching myself. My bad, y'all. Hey, but yeah, them stinking kids and hard ass, hard headed ass parents. Parents, some of these parents are ridiculous. I, I wanted to be a teacher. That's what I wanted to be when I grew up. Either an art teacher or I wanted to be a police officer. 
And boy, these kids, these that I'm gonna knock somebody's child head off they off their kid's shoulder. So hey, that wasn't for me. <laughs> I'm not playing with your kid. I would knock his head off. So that wasn't for me. <laughs> Bam, uh, what's going on? Did Garth? you go to school? Did you go to I school to, to, school to be a cop? For, I actually went to school for a graphic design. But okay. it got so expensive that they wanted my parents to put their house up. You know what I'm saying? That's how much and I only I did less than a year. It was so okay. expensive. You know what I'm saying? I say um, I, I can't speak for where you're at, but here it's basically a liberal arts major. And with that, you can go towards a police officer or a teacher, basically. Okay. So you would be covered either way. Okay. Yeah, but a lot of and a lot of people don't understand, man. A lot of these people send their children to school to, for these teachers to babysit. They don't have time to babysit. It starts at home. Mm -hmm. You should be kicking your kids' ass. You know how to get your kids at. And mine, mm -hmm. no. You but they better not call me because you got something going on at school. You know what you're supposed to go to school to do. Get it done. Or I'm gonna, I'm a, if I gotta come up there, I'm gonna knock your head off. It, that's that simple. I don't care who in the room. Yep, call Child Protective Services. I don't care. She'll be all right. He'll be all right. But I don't have that problem because mine already knew right off back before they went to school. They first started off in head school, uh, um, head start. So I kind of got them out the house kind of early. Um, and with the head start, by me only working the afternoons or the midnights, I was able to stay with my son, walk the, walk the head start school all the time, was able to be in his room, man. And I tell people, man, the most greatest thing I've done, I accomplished, is being able to be off work. Um, before my kids went to actually public schools, for me to be with them at Head Start and me be able to be there and being the presence to them knowing me being there translates over to them being in public school now because they didn't have to call me from home. I was already at the school. And if they had a problem with you, I was coming in that, in that classroom and straighten you up right then and there in front of your friends. I was going to embarrass you in front of your classmates. So they already know. If daddy got to come up to that school, I don't care what the school talking about. You about to get embarrassed in that school right then and there. My parents had not have a problem with it. I ain't got no problem with it. But you ain't going to. And that's one thing parents are, are making a mistake is letting the government tell them how to raise their children. You can't tell me how to raise somebody I'm feeding. You don't get the hell on. And that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Parents are a big problem. Uh, we have a, a, well, we had an issue here with one of the schools. Uh, basically, it, it's happening at all the schools around here, but, uh, you know, grades are horrible. Kids, you know, couldn't care less about, you know, paying attention, things like this. Uh, they were all the public got all kind of pissy about you know how things were going they fired the principal uh hired a new girl and uh who i personally liked uh i didn't have any kids in the school or anything not at that time and uh basically this new principal ended up doing a radio show here local radio and got on there and started talking and was basically stating that, you know, she was shocked at the condition the kids would come in. You know, they don't sleep at night. It's the middle of winter. They come in without coats. Their parents drop them off. They're wearing coats. Uh, nobody, you know, does anything at home. They got to teach these kids the basics, like, uh, you know, basic manners, um, you know, help basically stuff they should have learned at home. Well, yeah. make a long story short, in the end, like, you know, this thing was going on the radio. I'm sitting here clapping like, oh, yeah, we got a good one. A week later, they fired her ass because all the parents got mad because she put the responsibility back to the parents, which honestly is true because it's these so parents cool. don't <laughs> give a shit, man. They just drop them off like daycare. They don't they don't yep. put any effort into their kids. They don't work with them at home. They don't do nothing. What's up, and, Patrick? Uh, What's up, chopping with Chan? Yeah, my wife, one thing about her, she, she didn't work. My wife just recently, once my both my kids, once my youngest one got into elementary, she decided she wanted some more money. So she decided to work, which is not a problem. More income, I mean, because these days everything is going up, but your pay is, 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 is at the same rate. So 
didn't I didn't have a problem with it. I was used to, you know, paying the bills, making sure everything was taken care of. But her sole responsibility was to teach my children what they needed to know before they reached school. And that's what she did until they got in the elementary, until my, my last one got in the elementary. But it, it, it we have to, un and that's what's wrong with society now. Society puts it on everybody else but themselves. These parents walk around here putting it on everybody else. Well, my child is my child that. No, your child is somebody else outside your presence. I, I'm strongly believing, I believe in that, right? My daddy beat my butt, my daddy. My daddy wasn't a joke, but I also outside my dad, I did, I did things that I knew I shouldn't have done. And that's the same thing with my children. I know my children are going to do stuff outside me, but I'm hoping that I've taught them enough to not get themselves in so much trouble where it's going to be a, 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 you know, a mountain trying to get them up out of it, you know, climbing a mountain trying to get them up out of it. So, you know, don't, don't give me that your kid is this and that. Yeah, our children are, are a certain way in front of us, depends on how you raise them. But outside of us, they're a totally different person. You know, when my, my child, my daughter and my son is at school, they're totally different. I'm quite sure than what they are inside. I mean, inside the home with me or even outside the home with me. Um, and we have, as parents, have to realize and, and acknowledge that your child is not going to be the same outside you. Until we get that, we're going. a lot of these children are going to be a problem until until they become adults and then eventually end up either getting locked up or somebody putting them in the grave a lot earlier than what they need to be. But I mean that's just the reality we live in. All right. Parents are in denial. So he's no my kid wouldn't do that. Bullshit. Kids are just <laughs> little people. People do shit all the time we don't like. You know what I mean? So <laughs> Yeah, people are kind of funny. But no Bernie. Definitely not a cop, man. Never been a cop, technically. So, um, yeah, that's it's on my uh, my fallen father. I'll say I I'll give you my word on that. So, uh, never a civilian police officer or anything like that. Did you give me this one? Oh no! How much did you take out? You got four hundred, right? Yeah. How much did you take? You got four hundred, right? Give me twenty. You ain't got the twenty yet. You sure? Yeah. How you get twenty? I got four hundred sitting in my hand. Yeah, you know, this wrong. You know. That's a hundred. I got a second. At the time, it felt like I had to do something, and uh, the only thing local, as far as you know, through college that they had programmed for that. Uh, seemed pliable was the cjpo the criminal justice police officer so and to be honest i really didn't have to do much because the people i grew up with most of them were criminals so i already knew all the terms definitions and all that stuff so it was kind of like an easy thing to get if that makes any sense Well, that that and you know what the social security number is to be able to track you financially. That's a chokehold to be able to, you know, say you know that can go to your social security number, and that they can track you financially. Um, the fingerprint is to track you criminally. You know, when you're born, you get your fingerprint. You gotta, you know, put your fingerprint, and it's ultimately given to the hospital. So it, it's what's up, Charles? I didn't even see you. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm so late in the comments. Do not kill me. I am so, 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 so late in the comments. Yeah, you know, it, 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 every household is ran different. You just got to figure out what works for you and your and yours. Um, 
And so that's the way me and my wife household worked at that time. You know, agreement was I would financially pull that load and find uh and she would be here with the kids and make sure they get what they need. And it worked for us for a very long time. You know, like I said, she wanted to get her own money, which I didn't. I didn't mind her getting her own money. You're referring to your lady getting her own money? Yeah, she wanted her own money. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of prefer that. Not not that I'm going to force you to or something, but I, I really don't like freeloaders. You know what I mean? I don't mind helping you out. Like when I got with my lady, I just took her and the kids in in a sense uh money wasn't wasn't really an issue but she will work she does work you know what i mean but it's some of them chicks man they just want a free ride and i, I don't like that shit personally like and she and my wife she was working summer programs she did work she was just doing summer programs when we first got together but um i really wanted her to stay home and really watch my you know teach my children you know on and she did a very good job of that. And it, it, it shows now because they both are. I think my son just made the honor roll, like this report card. Um, I think last year my daughter got um, honored in the in the um, honors pr program for for last year. So for for us, it's showing the hard work she put into our children, and then what Head Start did for our children. Um, and the reason I like the head start was because with the head start that they went to, um, uh, parents had to put so much time, um, they had to put so much time in order for the, the government to match the, 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 um, the federal dollars. So it, how much they worked is you, we have to match them in order to get them federal dollars. Um, and so if it, it kind of got, and then we had a parent committee board. So you had a member of. I think it was maybe eight of us. I want to say about eight of us from each head start. Um, and you had the president and then you had the vice president and then you had everybody that was like, you know, part of the program, part of the parent committee board. But um, the first two years I was part of it. And then, no, the first year I, I, I got a part of it because I enjoyed it. Second year, I think I became either vice president or I still was on the committee board. And then a the third year, I became the first black male to become president of the uh, parent committee board at our school. And so that was a real great, great accomplishment um, for me to be the first black male um, to be the actual president on the parent committee board. And what the parent committee board do is we review what's going on as far as federal dollars what's our what our kids are getting fed um the budget or whatnot i was always um going to meetings with the with the with the director uh, of that particular head start here in michigan so it, it i got to learn the system um through being on a parent committee board and how that how does government certain government programs run and in the head start program by being a government funded program and the parents not having to come out their pocket well you didn't have to come out your pocket but you had to come out come out with come out with your time um and time so a lot of times i would bring stuff home cut stuff up for the teachers i know i, I know how to draw so a lot of them would have me draw up some cut some out so it became real fun man and, and I, i've noticed um, I, I tell you this funny story. No, it's not a funny story now, but it was a story that, um, and we had we had dogs, dads. It was some. It was it was some we had did for the dads because you know a lot of we a lot of I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it to y'all real honest. America don't really recognize fathers as fathers. I'm gonna let that sink in for y'all. Nope. Neither do um, the court. As soon as you try to be a father, they want to call CPS or, or take your ass to court these days. You're just supposed to be quiet and hand over money. Yeah. So we had a program, especially for the parents. I mean, for the for the for the fellas. Um, and we would literally stand out in front of school, make sure the kids are coming into school. 
that was just some of the stuff we did as fathers. Um, I forgot the acronym we used for it, but it was it was real it was real cool. So we ended up developing that program, um, and we will we will literally you know volunteer to maybe you know out of us some would stay during the day during the school hours, make sure the kids get in and out of school. Well, I was there for them every day. Um, I had a job to where I can come in and out and uh, you know be able to you know do what I needed to do, and I was fortunate to be able to do that. Um, but this one instance, this guy was coming to pick up his daughter and, um, he gets about maybe halfway ac across from the door in between the door of the school and the, 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 um, street. He's about halfway between the street and the school. And, and I overheard him tell his daughter, I think he ended up having a gun and ended up putting the gun out of his waist, man, um, on school property. And told his daughter, "This is for people that 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 f with you or something." It was something to that 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 effect. And I said, "Oh, I see. Yeah, that's that's mm. yeah, that's a problem. That that's a problem." <laughs> so I, I it, it's you know I raise your kids the best way you know how, but at the same time, let's not be ignorant. Um, we have ignorant parents. That's, I mean, that's, I'm going to be 100 with you. We got some ignorant mm. parents out here that shouldn't even have children. But, hey, God bless them with them. You know, I, I've definitely been able to say mine has been a blessing. I don't have any, as far as I've known, or the school haven't called me and my wife on either one of them being a problem. Um, matter of fact, my daughter has been some of my son's teachers. Um, once he left the elementary, and now he's in middle school. He'll be in high school next year. But they had, they have, had, they have said they have not, had nothing but enjoy teaching my children. And that started from them understanding: you don't go give no teacher no hard time. And you're not gonna be the one. And if you are, I'm gonna give you a hard time. And so I have definitely been blessed to, um, for pretty much every teacher that. I'm, talk my son and my daughter and they, and they both went to the same middle school i mean same elementary so um they have raved about my children and how they had they have had a wonderful time in, in teaching my children so I, I encourage you parents man don't don't stop being your kids parents i'm never my kids friend and i tell them that to this day i'm not your friend my dad used to tell me that all the time i couldn't understand what the hell he was talking about but now i do but uh you know don't be their friend to the point to where you forget that you that you are the you're the parent. I tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, you got a job as a parent, and uh, they ain't gonna necessarily always like you for it. But you gotta do your job. Uh, if you can become friends, consider it a blessing. But all in all, you're a parent first. All right, DJ Nice, thank you for dropping that link. If you got any crisis, you know, somebody in crisis, you know, he always dropping them them uh, them uh links, man. Don't forget, and we talked about this last the week before, I think, Um, as far as males, man, get get you a, 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 a strong, solid brotherhood that you can trust in. Um, And, and fellas, man, don't, don't put your boy out there, you know, especially if he's telling you something confident. Um. Because I, you know, once it's out there, and I know you're the only one that I told, it, it, it may come back to me different than what you told him. Then I got a problem. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't help with you. You know what I'm saying? So get you a solid brotherhood. Um, somebody you can call on if it's just one or two. Um, one person I've been able to, you know, what I'm saying, bounce off ideas or bounce off my thoughts is, is one person in here that's that's that that rocks for me, and that's Tackleberry Bug. Uh, we've been locked in ever since, man. I got to know this guy on on, um, on YouTube, and now we got it, you know, personal numbers. And you know, anytime, you know, he 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 needs to hit somebody up. He already know, no matter what time of the day, give me a hit. And uh, you know, anytime I need some, you know, what I'm saying he he he's able to, you know, you know, you know. And I, I've never heard anything come out of anybody's mouth. It's what I've told Bug. So, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's definitely one of my solid brothers that I can go to and, you know, have that conversation. We as men, we have so much on our plate that we forget that we're human. 
Um, I'm going to be the first to admit, I forget that I'm human sometimes because I got so much going on um, as a father and as a husband. And I forget about myself a lot of times that I'm so much running and making sure this is taken care of, making sure her car is running right now. Her car is doing some weird when I stop, it, it, it's, it's shaking. So now I got to deal with her car, but it's always something as far as if you're a responsible male that we forget about ourselves and um man have somebody you could talk to brothers um this is especially for my brothers um and, and women too you know but women always been had they my wife always on the phone with her friends so you know that she she's always on the phone chopping it up choking it up so um but us, us male Find somebody, a male that you that you call your brother that you can entrust in, you know, when things are not going so great. Said your wife's car is shaking. Yeah, I'm I, I got mechanics as friends. I'm gonna take it up to the job today and have them drive it and, and figure out what's going on with it. I we, I believe her wheels on the back needs to be changed, but I'm gonna have my guys look at it. I ain't worried about yeah, it. Yeah, there's there's a few possibilities with that. I mean, uh could be tie rod, could be ball joint, could yeah. be hit a pothole. Uh, you know, might have a bent rim. So, uh, you know, they're all fairly affordable, especially if you have mechanic friends, if you don't do it yeah. yourself. But uh, definitely, yeah, check, check. I'd look into it quicker than sooner than later because uh, depending on what it is, like if it is a, a bad bearing or something, it could light up on fire. Uh, you know, it, 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 there could be bigger problems basically yeah. if it's neglected so definitely get it looked at sooner and later oh, well, it could be as simple as loose uh, lug nuts because i've seen that before too so sounds crazy but uh you know if your lug nuts aren't tight or loosen up you know the the wheel shifts a little bit as you drive you get a shake eventually it oblongs the holes and you need a whole new rim uh, possibly studs too. Uh, so I definitely get it looked at sooner and later. Uh, but, um, yeah, man, y'all, y'all definitely be safe. Um, yeah, I, I, the good thing is where I work at, they got hoist. So we'll, we'll throw it on the hoist and, you know, get it checked out. I've done that a couple of times. So is it, I always take advantage of where I'm at and in, in the, in the resources that I do have. <laughs> so way to do it. Hey, was uh he did put up one for veterans. If you're a veteran or you know a veteran that's going through, man, um definitely um hit this particular website up or you know what I'm saying. Um shout out to the veterans, definitely there, yeah, man. Um we don't acknowledge them enough for me, but I do on, on my show, man. Shout out to the veterans that fought that that war. Unnecessary a lot of unnecessary wars, but you know how that go. Um, and here go another one for your health care um, evaluation here. That, that's another website he dropped. So thank you, uh, DJ Play Nice, for dropping a couple resources that people can go to and, um, um, you know. Uh, I think he does drop suicide. If you're thinking suicide, I believe he's dropped one before. Uh, what's up, Charles Henry? Um, I think he has in, in, in previous drop, um, if you think about suicide, um, I just had a, you know, somebody that my wife knows thinking about suicide. So it, it's real. It's definitely real. Well, I said I wasn't going to go on till three o'clock. Well, I'm almost there, but I'm about to get up out of here and go eat me some and get ready for work. But y'all make sure y'all stay safe. Stay off them phones, women and men when you're in and out doing shopping um it's easy to take somebody that's looking down at the phone rather than somebody that got their head up you know looking around and making sure everything's all right um but man thank y'all for rock with me thank you uh hot tub tony thank you new york outcast for coming on man i appreciate you you know anytime you jumped on here man you've been a blessing so thank you brother for hopping on with with me thanks right, man pleasure man Oh, here you go. This is uh, suicide prevention. If you know somebody, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Thank you, brother. Yeah. 
So, like I said, man, thank you, DJ Play Nice, for dropping a couple of them links for, you know, if you need a little help, reach out, get the help you need, man. Everybody is important. You don't know what your mission is, man. Get to know your mission in life and, you know, stick for it and go for it, man. Um, I appreciate y'all once again, man. Y'all be safe. And uh, see y'all next weekend. Peace. It's your favorite gun. I'm going to check it out. Peace.